The Lord be with you. Good morning and welcome to worship on this Reformation Sunday. It is good to greet those who are here in the sanctuary and good to welcome those who are joining us online, either on the live stream or watching it as a recorded service. Today is Reformation Sunday and we remember with thanksgiving the ministry of Martin Luther as he taught to turn the church away from the idea that we have to earn our own standing before God or earn our salvation and brought the church back to a focus on the free gift of the gospel of God's love in Jesus Christ. So we celebrate that today. Of course, you're going to hear about it in the sermon, in the readings. Um, it is our focus today. I do want to offer a special word of welcome to visitors and guests who are with us, either here in the sanctuary or online. We are glad that you are with us. And if you are a visitor, we pray that you will experience God's love for you here this morning. For folks here in the sanctuary, please do take a moment, take your cell phone out, double check it, and make sure that it is silenced for our service today. If you're with us online, you can go to rlcmilford.com connect to download a copy of the bulletin that'll help you follow along in today's service. At that same address, whether you're online or here, you can get a copy of the coming week's daily devotional guide. We do have a few hard copies of that out in the narthex as well. You're invited to stay in between services today for fellowship time. The last Sunday of the month, we just have coffee fellowship between services, and our Bible study on the questions of Jesus will start up again next Sunday. In the bulletin, there are a lot of announcements. There's a lot going on. I want to especially lift up our All Saints Sunday remembrance list, how to get a name on there. There are children's bulletins, again, um, for those who would want those. Um, also, there's an invitation to help with our senior quilt project. So those are some ones I especially want to highlight. You'll see that information and more in the bulletin. Today, we begin our annual fall stewardship focus. And that campaign is going to conclude on November 20th. So you can mark your calendars Sunday, November 20th. We will be having our Commitment Sunday when we invite people to make estimates of giving for the coming year. As a part of that, you are invited next Sunday after the 11 o'clock service to come to an all-congregation lunch. Um, it's a meal that will be provided for you. Um, we do ask if you're coming just to um, RSVP to the church office so we know about how many to plan for. It is going to be a time just to get together for fellowship, for celebrating our church's ministry. You're going to hear some stories about how our ministry has impacted people in our church over the last year. Um, and really, it's a time just to be together and enjoy each other's company. And that's something we have not had enough of. So it is good to be getting back to that. So I hope that you will be able to join us next Sunday. I want to say thank you to everyone who came out yesterday to make scarves for the homeless. The group made 116 scarves, and they will be distributed between Code Purple and Milford Advocacy for the Homeless. So, and Sherry Titherington, the Christian Service Committee Chair, wanted me to extend a special thank you to everyone for your hard work on that. So, we are going to be talking about stewardship this month, so I'm not going to make a big announcement about the offering plate. Just to remind you, it is in the narthex and you can go online to rlcmilford.com slash give, and your offerings, both financial and offerings of service, empower our church to do the work of Christ, and we do thank you for that. And now this morning we have people who are offering their gifts to the glory of God, our Reformation ringers, and they're going to begin our worship now with the prelude.
Please stand as you're able for confession and forgiveness. We gather in the name of the God who makes all things new, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, send your Holy Spirit into our hearts, so that walking your ways of repentance and faith, we may be set free from sin to live for you. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But the Spirit of God is the Spirit of all truth and mercy, who brings forgiveness and new life. Let us therefore confess our sins in the presence of God and of one another, so that we may live in truth, holiness, and joy. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name, now and forever. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die and rise again for the salvation of the world. And in his name, God pours out the redeeming spirit of new life. And so, as a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God of all grace and mercy, send your Holy Spirit upon us and on your whole church, so that we may trust ever more deeply in the gospel of your Son, who was crucified and raised again for our salvation. As we look to him in hope, May we be filled with joy and perfect confidence in your grace, through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. You may be seated, and I'll invite the children to come join me for the children's sermon. Good morning, guys. How are you guys doing today? You good? All right. You see a lot of red today? Now, is that because everybody here is rooting for the Phillies? No, it's not. I mean, everybody here is rooting for the Phillies, right? All right, nobody's throwing stones at me, so that's a good sign. All right. We're wearing red because do you know what day it is today? Do you... Reformation Day. Yeah, it's a very special Sunday, Reformation Day. And we wear red because red in church is the color of the Holy Spirit. And on Reformation Sunday, we are remembering something that God the Holy Spirit did. The Holy Spirit came to a, a, a teacher of the church named Martin Luther. Now, when you hear the name Martin Luther in a Lutheran church, you think Martin Luther might be important in a Lutheran church? Yeah, that's where we get our name from, as Lutherans. See, in Luther's day, the churches had gotten a little bit off course. And they were telling people, you've got to be good enough for God to love you. You've got to try harder. You've got to work harder. You've got to be better. And Martin Luther saw that everybody was saying, we can't be good enough we're never going to be perfect. We can't do it. And Luther said, hey, whoa, 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 wait a minute. That's not what God wants. God loves us just the way we are. We don't have to impress God. You don't have to do lots of really amazing things for God to look down and notice you and say, oh, wow, I love them. No. 
God already loves you with the biggest love the universe could hold. Even when we do things wrong, even if we mess up really, really badly, God still loves you perfectly. And the way he proved that was he sent his son Jesus, who died on the cross and rose again, so all of our sins could be forgiven. And Luther said, I want the church to tell everyone that Jesus loves them. I want the church to tell people, yeah, yep, you've, you've done things wrong. We've all done things wrong. Nobody's perfect. And we should be sorry for those things. But more than being sorry, we should thank God that he forgives us and loves us no matter what. And Luther said, when, when the church does that, when we just tell people that Jesus loves them, then we are doing what God wants us to do. So I want you guys to remember, no matter what, for your whole life through, Jesus is always, always with you. He always loves you. And God always looks at you and has a huge smile on his face, knowing that he made you and he is so glad that you are here. And the cool thing is, as Lutherans, we get to tell other people that same thing, that Jesus loves them and that God is so happy that he made them. So I hope you guys remember, Jesus is always with you. He loves you more than you could ever imagine, and he will always be there for you. And that's what Reformation is all about. All right? All right, thanks for listening so well, and you may return to your seats, and we continue with the readings. A reading from Jeremiah. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, a covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or say to each other, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord, for I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from Ephesians. You were dead through the trespasses and sins in which you once lived following the course of this world, following the ruler of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work among those who are disobedient. All of us once lived among them in the passions of our flesh, following the desires of flesh and senses, and we were by nature children of wrath like everyone else. But God, who is rich in mercy, out of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead through our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved, and raised up with him, and seated us, and raised us up with him, and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, so that in the ages to come he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace and kindness toward us in Jesus Christ. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not the result of works, so that no one may boast. For we are what he has made us, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand to be our way of life. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Holy Gospel according to St. John, the eighth chapter. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Lord. Then Jesus said to the Jews who had believed in him, If you continue in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. They answered him, We are descendants of Abraham and have never been slaves to anyone. What do you mean by saying, you will be made free? Jesus answered them, Very truly I tell you, everyone who commits sin is a slave to sin. The slave does not have a permanent place in the household. The son has a place there forever. So if the son makes you free, you are free indeed. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, you, O Christ. Christ. You may be seated. Dear sisters and brothers, grace, mercy, and peace to you from God the Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. All he wanted was just one more chance. You ever been there? He just wanted one more opportunity to prove himself, to finally put all the questions to rest. He's got this drive, you see. One more go at it. Maybe he'd finally be satisfied. So how's that working out for Tom Brady these days? <laughs> 40 days retired. I heard somebody say he gave up football for Lent. <laughs> he comes back, evidently under the vehement objections of his wife, only to have what is shaping up to be his worst season yet. And if you follow the news, then you know also that his marriage is now over. Now, I know the season could turn around, and I don't want to seem like I'm treating the dissolution of a marriage with all the damage that brings to a family like it's some piece of celebrity gossip. But Brady thought he was doing what he needed to do, what he wanted to do. And I bring this up because it actually serves as a great illustration for one of the deepest truths of Reformation Sunday. Today, we thank God for the Reformation of the Church that began on October 31st, 1517, with Martin Luther nailing his 95 theses, 95 points for theological discussion, to the church door in Wittenberg. Now, Luther did not intend to divide the church or create a new church, he definitely did not want his followers to be called Lutherans. Sorry. He objected. He protested against the teachings that Christians had to earn enough spiritual merit in order to deserve God's forgiveness. That we had to work hard enough to get grace. And especially he protested the idea that, you know, if you didn't want to do the spiritual hard work, you could always buy an indulgence that would get your sins forgiven and you'd get off scot-free for a little bit of cash. Luther wanted to bring the focus back to what it always should be the free gift of grace given to us in Jesus Christ. You don't have to impress God. You don't have to get your life together before God will care about you. Listen to what Paul wrote in Ephesians. Even when we were dead, dead through our trespasses, God made us alive together with Christ. Even when we were dead. Now, I'm not a medical doctor, 
but I'm fairly certain that part of being dead is you can't do anything. Paul's saying when we are powerless, when we're helpless, when we are stuck in our sins, when we are in a mess of our own creation and we cannot see the way out, God pours out forgiveness to raise us up to new life. God sees you wherever you are, and he always only looks at you with compassion. Amen. His love is more than enough to give life to your soul. Now, how does that connect with Tom Brady? Now, I'm not going to try to analyze why he came out of retirement or what has been going on in his marriage. But he obviously feels like he still has something to prove. I'm sure he loves the game and all that, but he is chasing something out on that football field. And that chase has led to a broken marriage with his family dealing with the fallout for years and years to come. And this points to a major insight of the Reformation. When we try to use our own strength and understanding, our own abilities and capacities to create our own peace, our own satisfaction, our own security, what theologians call our justification, when we try to do that on our own power, we inevitably end up hurting people. Ourselves, our loved ones, our neighbors. Trying to get our hearts right by our own efforts It'll never work. Relationships will be broken, damage will be done, and we will only end up disappointed. That's what Paul means when he uses that phrase in Ephesians there, children of wrath. That doesn't mean, oh, you're, you're super bad. No. It's a way of saying that we are caught up in all the fear and the shame and the pride, all the general brokenness of this world. We're stuck in it. And Luther saw with crystal clarity, we can't get ourselves out of it. So he protested against the church of his day, putting this burden onto people that you had to be good enough or spiritual enough. You had to try hard enough to set yourself free. Back then, people were burning themselves out, trying to accomplish impossible obligations. I don't think it was only back then, either. In our day, we're not only burning ourselves out, we're burning each other, too. I mean, we still want to justify ourselves, give ourselves the feeling that, well, maybe everything isn't all right, but at least I'm right. So we delude ourselves. We break relationships. And for all of our effort, the anxiety and pain just multiply. But it doesn't have to be this way. We don't have to run ourselves ragged trying to improve our lives. We don't have to run over other people trying to fix the world. The Reformation reminds us, hey, we actually can't get ourselves all together, never mind save the world. And that's why Jesus came. When we are helpless, 
when we're stuck, when we are at the end of our rope and beyond, Jesus is right there for you with mercy and grace. In him, you are forgiven. You are claimed. You are loved. You are justified. In him, your heart can be healed. And by his power, your life can be set right. His love washes you clean and makes your soul eternally secure. This is the treasure that we all need. It's also the hope that our world needs. See, Reformation isn't a day for Lutherans to brag about how our theology is better. It's a day for us to reclaim the freedom and the joy that come from God's outrageous grace. It's a day to revel in the good news that you are fully loved and freely forgiven. It's also a day for us to consider how that grace still needs to reform our hearts and renew our lives. How are we searching for our security or our meaning from things, ideas, people, or dreams, anything other than Jesus? Where are we running away from the truth about ourselves and about God? But now this day isn't just about our personal relationship with Jesus. Remember, the whole world needs this message. And so, yes, we begin talking about our fall stewardship on Reformation Sunday. Because our mission is to share this hope and healing of Jesus beyond the walls of this church. Jesus wants to be known by our neighbors. He wants to serve our community. And we are the ones that he wants to send and use to make his love known, to make his love real for others. See, stewardship is just the question. Will you enter into that mission? Will you let the love of Jesus sweep you up into love for others? Will you let his gospel shape how you use your time, your energy, even your money. Jesus claims and loves all of you. And he wants to transform all of you to share his love further and further. That is how the Reformation continues to live. That's how Reformation continues to live. Jesus pouring his love into us, and we let it shape and direct and renew all that we are and all that we have. So, on this Reformation Sunday, and all days, trust in Jesus. He really is everything your soul needs. And he is the one who will redeem our world. May we offer ourselves to be a part of his work. Amen. Amen. Please stand.
rejoicing in the gift of the gospel, let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need. Heavenly Father, we give thanks for the teachings of Martin Luther. Keep us and all Christians steadfast in your word of truth and set free by your never-failing love. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, we search for our peace, our security, <laughs> and our joy from so many sources instead of from you. Forgive us our wandering, and in your tender mercy, call us back to faith in you so that we may know the freedom of and power that come from you alone. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. O Holy Spirit, we lament before you the separations of your church on earth. Let us not be content with so many denominations and divisions and draw all your children together in mutual love, faith, and unity of the gospel. May we stand together as a more compelling witness to your grace. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray, O oh God, for the mission of our congregation. Stir us up to greater generosity with our time, talents, and treasures so that we may come together to serve your purposes and be a blessing to our community. Lord, in your mercy. Hear Lord, our prayer. prayer. Almighty God, deliver the people of Ukraine from war, comfort families of those trampled in soul, calm the rage and madness of political violence in our nation, use your church as an instrument of peace for all people, and send us out in greater service to all who are in need. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we lift before you now those who are sick, grieving, or in other special need, especially Pastor John Ranney, Ray Gannon, Lee Clark, June Brightfeller, Linda Kakamis, Barbara Sith, David, Kathy Hubbard, Katie De Silva, Scott Wright, Pastor Eric Evers, Melinda, Jacob Hollick, Barbara Hayes, Jean Cohert, Paul and Martha Oldman, Jay Baruby and family, Janice Yeager, Lillian Beebe, Christian, Mary, Rob Massey, Carol Warrington, Dave Sylvester, Joyce Naiman, John Leach, Lisa Lazera, Kevin Clark, Maddie Cabana, Hannah Warrington, Corey Subjinski, Kelsey Oldman, Bob Dyke, and those whom we name now aloud or in the silence of our hearts. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Gracious God, hear these and all our prayers, so that everyone may experience your abundant love through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And now, O Lord, make us bold to pray as your Son taught, saying, Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. If you're watching the live stream or recorded service and others are with you, please offer a sign of God's peace. For those of us here, please be mindful of keeping distance between households as you sh share a sign of God's peace with one another. Let's be with you.
e made it simple. For those who are joining us online, we are going to bring the online part of our service to a close now. We are glad that you have joined us, and we are glad that you are a part of our community of faith. And now we bless you to find your hope in Christ's love for you, and to share that love with everyone you meet. Go in peace and serve the Lord wherever you are. Thanks be to God. <laughs>